Can I request everybody to start taking their seats, please? Especially my audience at the door. Please do come in. Okay. Hi, everybody. And for those that this is a repeat, I apologize, but I see new faces in the audience. So, uh, my name is Shali Kurwana, and I'm an independent curator and educator across arts and digital culture ecosystems. This talk's program, titled Align and Disrupt, was curated by me over the last eight months. Through these talks, we aim to align the voices of leading artists and arts professionals on critical issues in the arts ecosystem and collectively disrupt the status quo to shape a more aware and inclusive art world of the future. For the first time, the key learnings and insights from these talks will be documented as I am the note taker for all talks along with my assistant researcher, Satya Myadha. This document will be accessible to the public on the India Archive website later this month. All talks are will be conducted in Indian Sign Language. Big round of applause for my interpreter on stage, please. This is the last talk of this series, so I expect lot of critical engagement and please keep your phones on silent. Now, I take your attention onto the screen. One of the more, the, what, a, what a talk to go from and what a talk to go to, let me put it that way. We're looking at art historical blind spots from the margins to the mainstream. In South Asia, arts curricula, histories and systems are trying to move forward from a Eurocentric lens towards an attempted decolonized relooking at ourselves. In this process, intersectionality in the history of representation of voices in the arts and art history pose a tough challenge to address in any type of format, let alone this panel. This panel is an attempt to start identifying the ideas and people whose voices are crucial on our table. The lens at play in this panel is underrepresented minorities through multiple spectrums ranging from economic positioning, religion and caste, and what is necessary for arts private and public spaces to be more inclusive, accessible and open in that regard. Rising contemporary artists, Apan Raza, Amol K. Patil, who is, visible with, who is present to an online presence, Prabhakar Kamble and Siddhesh Gautam, discuss the importance of magnifying marginalized voices in art, society and art history in a conversation moderated by Professor Dr. Parag Dave Mukherjee. I will tell you a bit more about each of the panelists. As I speak the panelists' name, I request a small wave to the audience. Prabhakar Kamle is an artist, curator, and cultural activist who works with the notions of equality in his practice dealing with social realities stemming from existential conditionings and Ambedkarite consciousness. He curated Open Mind, a retrospective exhibition at the National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai in 2021. He has shown at Berlin Biennale, Amatap, Marco encounters African Biennale of Photography. He is also the convener of the secular art movement. Next, Satesh Bhattam. He is a Delhi based, multidisciplinary, mixed media artist, designer, treasure hunter, and soul searcher, and an Ambedkar. His work is meant to challenge your perceptions, expand your mind honor the sacred and evoke feelings of agitation, exploration and deeper connection with the self. He has been practicing as a visual designer, artist, storyteller and educator and is currently working on a graphic novel on Buddhism in India. His work is focused on the visual documentation of India's anti-caste movement. Abhanraza. Artist Aban Raza held her first solo exhibition Luggage, People, and a Little Space at Gallery Near Jandani and Steinbrook in Mumbai in 2020. Her works have been shown at Terrain Art, the Lalit Kala Academy, and Art Heritage. Her curated experience includes Celebrate, Illuminate, and Rejuvenate. Defend the Constitution at 70, India is not lost, both exhibitions in 2020 and 2021 respectively. She received the HRD Junior Fellowship from 2018 to 2020, the IFAS Award in 2014, the Sona Core Award in 2013. And lastly, our moderator today, Dr. Parul Tabe Mukherjee. 
is a professor at the School of Arts and Aesthetics, GNU, New Delhi, India. She has taught at the MS University, Baroda, and her books <coughs> and her books include Influx, a Temporary Art in Asia, co-edited, Arts and Aesthetics in a Globalizing World, co-edited with Amanda Kaur and Ibrahim Kazi, Directed Art, the Making of Modern Indian Art World. Amol K. Patil, present with us online, is a conceptual and performance artist. On his work across the globe, most recently in Paris, Helsinki, Lagos, and Glasgow. Patil considers his practice an ever-reaching attempt to recapture the vibrating surroundings of his memory of Chols. Chol is a form of five-story social housing for mill and factory workers built in the early 1900s in Mumbai. Now, <coughs> Amol is present through an online clip and voice note. I hand this over to Dr. Parul to take this forward, and one of the more important acts of doing anything like this is to give the mic over always. Thank you. Thanks, Shari, for inviting me to moderate this session. Very exciting. And welcome to the four speakers. Our first speaker is going to be digitally present, and they will be able to record it to my presentation, which will be shown to us shortly. But 
कैसी होंगे I'm learning from my own community and my family are there. My grandfather is a Pohara person. Pohara means poetry writer, perform. They are travelers. They travel different places to perform. He's going about to support the community and against the British My father, he's a, he's a data activist. He wrote Screen about the learning where he grew I have been following Dalit writer and thinker Ambed longer than period. For me, this regeneration conversation to think about the past, present, and future, future I can imagine but I can't change. In Bombay, longer time period, I'm working with a larger group of people who come from the same community. The morning time period, they are doing a cleaning job, and evening time period, they are doing a theater activities. For me, to working with them, to working with them to exchange ideas and learning different body languages. I collect objects from garbage areas, I collect dust from different places and I make a hybrid objects. That hybrid objects to create untouchability and talk about the steam qualities. My installation looked like a steel image, but when you go closely, there are small moments. That small moments, meditation all the body senses, touch, sound, breathe and working process. In my recent work, I'm looking at the construction of the urbanization and invisibility of the working class in urban imagination. My project is to build counter memories and construction navigations that desire and disturb that relationship between the human and landscape. I is a community partner. I'm just a person from Yeah, I wish Amul was with us, uh, but uh, I'm going to now move on to our second speaker, Aban Raza, who will be doing presentation and talking about her work. Uh, uh, yeah, she'll, be, she'll start talking about the segment and then she'll be Um, okay. So on 1st January 1989, Sabdar Hashmi, along with his theatre group Jana, were attacked by performing Halla Bol in Sahibabad. And Sabdar Hashmi soon succumbed to injuries, along with a factory worker who also died called Ram Bahadur. Um, Sabdar Hashmi was a cultural activist, a playwright, a poet, and an actor. He was committed to the cause of working with the people and on the issues that affected the people. The collective grief and anger caused by his murder built a resolve amongst artists, writers, intellectuals, filmmakers to resist all attempts to stifle creative expression and freedom of speech and thought. This led to the formation of Sehmat, Sabdar Hashmi Memorial Trust. Sabdar, became a powerful symbol of resistance and Sehma, since its inception, has strengthened that commitment, stood for creative freedom and cultural autonomy across India. Um, the projects conceived by Sehma can be defined as interventions to disrupt complacency towards all forms of injustices. Um, so the challenge posed to the right of expression by the murder of Sabdar Hashmi was met by the resolve to confront it with uni united resistance. This is the first manifesto which contains the trustees, the patrons, the committee members. 
So the idea was that, hey, we have come together to resist, but how do we sustain this resistance? And therefore, Sehmat as an organization, a platform, an artistic um, collective, collective was formed. So here are the themes of the people who initially joined, and then people, you know, joined, other people joined, some left, some came back, but people have had association with Sehmat throughout. Um, this is, so Sermat organized the first exhibition called Artists Alert, where all the artists across the country donated a work. And this is a very powerful piece written by Geeta Kapoor, where she discusses how the role of the artist needs to be redefined, needs to be more political. They need to, they, they need to be, mystify art and make it more accessible, but also complicated enough so that the state can't own it or they can't appropriate it. Um, so this is one of the works which Sona Thor gave for Comrade. Now we can... This one is Mohana Hussain. This is Emmet Hussain. This is Vima. This is just to give you an idea that how many people participated, but just a few, because I only have five minutes. <laughs> so we'll quickly go through it. But this was the first exhibition. Then through night no. Just let me explain a bit about the project and you can go to the next. Thank you. Um, through 1991 and 1992, uh, there was this monumental rise in communalism which was basically culminated into uh, the demolition of Babri Masjid. Um, so in response to these disturbing developments, Sehmat launched a campaign called Artists Against Communalism. So um, this position performance as a tool of resistance. You can go to the um, That's Hari Prasad Jorasya. This created a new vocabulary of protest in India. It's arguably one of the first examples. Um, it became an assertion of the plurality and composite nature of India's cultural tradition. It started in Delhi, but then it traveled to many uh, cities, around 30 cities. That's uh, Astad. Uh, this is a uh, badness painted by artists which was exhibited in the 90s. So it also did campuses. It went to schools, it went to colleges. Um, <laughs> so from Artist Against Communalism, Images and World, another project came out. This project traveled to 30 cities and had, had done a tour of 40 schools in Delhi itself. Here the artists and writers were invited to express themselves against the growing intolerance. Um, what is more important, what is more important is how it was displayed, how you could dismantle it, take it around. It actually it was taken out from gallery space and onto the streets. So, you know, commuters, people walking by engaged with the work, everyday citizen engaged with the work. So that was, it was a June background, the means was very cheap, it could travel anywhere and everywhere. These are just a few examples as to how they were displayed. This is how it was, you know, handled on the road. It, I also went to 30 cities as mentioned before. Okay, so um, 6th December 1992, Babri happens. Um, Sema defied police orders and restrictions that were imposed and occupied the streets in Monday House. Uh, the poetry was read, songs were sung, painting was made all against the demolition. This was a defining moment. The nationwide grief and shock found expression and a unique sense of solace in the coming together of the artists. Within weeks of the demolition, Sehmat organized Anad Karche. Uh, this brought together the practitioners of the Sufi Bhakti tradition. This also traveled to many cities, but the cities that were affected by the communal violence, like Surat, Ahmedabad, Baroda, Bombay, um, Lucknow. This is the same on the Okay. Um, on 15th August 1993, um, Sehmat organized another very big event called Muktnad. 
and many artists travel from all over India. This was against the heart, the Yodhya heart, and they were they basically occupied. They felt the need to go reclaim the spot and talk about how violence is not the solution, how we need to remember our Indian heritage, whatever that means, but in terms of peace, in terms of brotherhood, sisterhood, in terms of being equal. Next. This is how the artists were talking these are just examples. Um, simultaneously, simultaneously there was an exhibition called Hamsa Vayodhya, which uh, was attacked by the right wing Boons after three days of the exhibition. Um, this was also a campus created where artists went, put their thoughts, everyone was invited to contribute, even the people on the streets. Then we jump to what Sema did in 2020. It's an exhibition called Celebrate, Illuminate, Rejuvenate, Defend the Constitution of India at 70. Um, the lockdown on Kashmir just happened, the repeal of 370. Barbie judgment just came out in 2019. NRCC and NPR protests were seen across the country. So um, this the Sema um, thought of how to contribute what was happening in the streets and then it organized this exhibition which is talking about the constitution as being a work in progress and also the constitution had just turned 70 and the need to protect it, to defend it, emerge with all the upheavals that were happening. So here, it's just to give you an idea, this is Mahula Kosh's work, this is Ohida, this is Garima Gupta. Guru Charan Murkur, Jyoti Das, Drobaji, Chandan Noms. This was on the Delhi riots that had just happened after while Shining Bar was happening. This is uh, Sajeev Visvesh Bharat. This is Sana Irshan Matro, who is a Kashmiri photographer. The reason why I'm stopping and talking a bit about this is because of this poster which has a date on it because we don't need to believe in mainland India that everything was normal. Um, but here there were protests happening that the date that the protester has written just so that it gets captured and the word gets spread out and we try our best to do that. Um, then we did um, another exhibition on 75 years of India's independence called Hang Sab Sermat, which was also an open call. It's still open. People can still contribute if you want to. It's a year-long exhibition, again talking about 75 years of India's independence. What does it mean? Who is free? Who is not free? And now I close. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Hello, Jerry, as a Kumai and Kumar again, because I have to keep reminding people that these people exist and that these people exist for the masses of the people. I'm sorry to you know, repeat it again and again. I'm Sudesh Vatam, as I was introduced as an illustrator and you know, important, most importantly, a soul searcher. So I started my journey as a soul searcher, searching my own soul. Who am I? And you know, what am I doing here? And you know, where do I come from? And you know, what? connects me to the world because I was told that you know I was born a Dalit, I was born an untouchable, I was born in Mahalla Lal Sarai, you know, which was uh, by the side of Nala. Uh, I was born, you know, uh, with the ideals like Ambedkar, which I was afraid to use or you know I would not have my friends, you know, at home because you know they will know about my caste and they'll not be uh, my friends. So when you all talk about these Lacanian and you know a lot of other philosophers from the West, I was stuck by the social structure that was created, you know, on this on this country, on this subcontinent, which made me think and doubt myself for the longest part of the time, because of which I had to live lies, you know, to tell, you know, I have to I had to discard the uh, conversations around cars or where do I come from. So this is mostly about my journey of where do I come from. So if I... So this is the how I was talking about, you know, I am, who am I? And, and you know, I see myself as a reflection of these ideals, you know, who have been forgotten, who have not been talked about, or who have been limited as only Tarit, 
uh, you know, idols or only telling human beings or, you know, and I also thought that, you know, that is the truth. Maybe, you know, they are right. Maybe I should look up to people like Mr. Gandhi or Nehru because they are the people of the masses. They are the leaders of the masses. Only later, I realized that, no, my leaders are also the leaders of the country and, you know, most probably leaders of the world as well. This is me, uh, this is me sitting with Baba uh, Sahib and you know, this is uh, uh, my background, I am a Jama and uh, I was afraid to, you know, uh, use this terminology, which is the slang, which is the Gali and uh, it was because of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, because of Swami Trimai that, you know, I was able to also realize this thing that I come from the family of craft persons and, you know, people who can make art out of dead animal. So I started to think, pride in the, not in the caste, but that you know that my identity also had some sort of values or also had some sort of culture which was taken away from me. I was told that you know I have to worship some gods or I was told I have to speak in a certain language. I was told that I am supposed to believe in such rituals or culture, then only I will be accepted. But it was because of this dead, dead man you know who came, who start coming to my dream, not spiritually, but you know, because I am a creative person, so I could dream about these things. I can make dead people alive, so you know, I started to uh, you know, make them alive in my mind and decided to talk to them. And then I started to have a certain sort of confidence, you know, to, to be able to do, to be able to reflect and to be able to be and exist as a human being. I started to, I started to read more because of Baba Saidi, he gave us this wonderful weapon or bazooka or gun or AK-47 which we call pen and you know this was the first time we held pen and the pen that we held you know in these 75 years if you see this is the community which has grown you know from not being even allowed to walk on the you know streets without a broom to you know going and studying in Howard and you know even you know taking part in you know such elite spaces like Indian Art Fair and places and Kochi Perana and other places so he introduced me to these people like Gatke Maharaj. Who is Gatke Maharaj? We have all, always known about Mr. Gandhi as, as a person, you know, who started this campaign of cleaning uh, the society. But you know, this is how you all have been, you know, taking credit for our work. Because it was Gatke Maharaj, you know, who was who started way before Mr. Gandhi cleaning the streets and telling people, you know, that why hygiene is important and how it was hijacked by Mr. Gandhi to you know, become this, you know, pioneer of Swachh Bharat mission, which was started way before by the people because they are Dalits. So, I yeah, will not give you credits. Can we move to the next slide? Next slide. Also, I also, like, uh, I think of myself not just a, a, you know, a Dalit from India or subcontinent. I think of myself as one of the marginalized communities of the world as a global citizen because that was the dream that Baba Sahib gave to us. So I am able to relate to Nina Simone way more than any Lata Mangeshkar or Raja Bosley or anybody else. So I started to look, you know, beyond the subordinate. I started to not just have solidarity but also have this, you know, sort of love for the people from the marginalized communities. I think, you know, there is much more love between me and a person living 6,000 miles away from me then, you know, then me and my own neighbors. So I started to look for the songs, you know, which were written far away, but, you know, it was still, you know, connecting me to my people and somehow uh, making me much more powerful, much more confident about my own identity and myself. And then I started to look at, you know, uh, like Peria. I started to go to these dreams and I started to relive these memories of when, what, what would have happened when Peria went to Kashi. Why did he wrote about it? So I, in my, in my own because I am a visual person and I am creator, I'm sorry. I can think and I can think which is, uh, might not be true. So I started to go back to these places. I started to go back to these historical times. And I am living, you know, my life with these people like Peria. And I start to have these conversations directly, you know, with these people. That what happened to you in Kashi? Why did you, uh, you came to Kashi to become a saint. You came to Kashi to become a pandit. And you know what happened to you that you became so anti brahminical So I started to have this conversation, you know, with, uh, with, with the idols who are dead or you know who are not recognized. I started 
and it was because of all these uh, identities, all these different uh, people who were lost in the, uh, in the history, I started to feel that, you know, my existence matters, at least to me now. Before that, you know, other people would decide my existence, other people would decide my identity. Now it was me who was deciding my identity. I can be like in the first slide, I, I can be a person in a panya, and you know, this slide I can be a king, and you know, start with Baba Sahib with a, with a dignity which, which every human deserves. And also I started to, uh, you know, relive the, uh, uh, the identity of ourselves. This is my father, this is my grandfather, and then this is Baba Sahib Ambedkar, and this is Buddha, and then this is Zavidas. So it is because of my family, of, you know, uh, because of which I am here and they are right here. Uh, had they not uh, gone to the school, you know, and then... It's the first time I've answered. My mother, who did not know how to read must read properly, she anticipated the open possible and her father was not there. It was because of my family, I am sitting here. I have gone to bloody Europe and you know, bloody everywhere and I will be, you know, because, because, you know, these people exist and they work so hard. You know, everybody celebrated their parents and everybody, all of you have these, you know, photographs and everything of your parents and grandparents. We did not even have those. So we have to create our own thing. You never even considered as us as human beings. Again, you know, you, you all believe that you are not casteist. You know, the, the day I, we entered Indian art fair, you know, with my, from my partner, there was this one person who said that, you know, Ambedkar's artwork is there. That's how you decide, you know, where our space is in the, in the name of being elites, in the name of being, you know, whatever you want. We, our community is the most missionary community I've ever seen. The people who are not even allowed to walk freely on the roads are now taking the places that it's not because of you. We are here not because of you, because we have been asserting our values, we have been asserting our voices, we have been asserting our pen strokes, we have been asserting our materials, and we have been asserting our ideologies, which has made us here. And this is me, with the blue flowers, who will bloom and bloom and bloom and make this whole world blue. Based on the cast that the rest of the art world was, was the 
Berlin artist. The question still exists that whenever I ask them question that please explain me why he called me as a Berlin artist, then they don't have any answer because they always tag us, they always force us to carry this identity which they on the car. So please remind that those who call us Dalit artists, they are fastest. I mean it's, it's, I dare to say that, I dare to make the statement that you still you still keeping us in a bracket that is based on the caste. Nobody can call Sneel Patwana as a labor artist because not only talks about labor, but the person who the person who talks about anti caste, the person who don't believe in the caste, again they are attacked as well because they come from the particular government. How the contradiction works, you know, how their understanding towards the particular question of caste. So that's the question that we are dealing with the secular art movement and remember, remember the secular art movement is not you know, talks about particular government. It is based on the fully arbitrary ideology and the society, it really a society that is intended in the Indian constitution. Thank you. as I see it. People ask about people, decolonization is a very tricky topic to be honest and that's why everybody is talking about it. But decolonization from whom and from what and whose decolonization are we talking about? There was a community who was colonized for thousands of years way before Britishers entered or way before these foreign ships landed on, on, uh, on, on this peninsula. What is decolonization? How do you define colonization? When you impose certain sort of cultural and you know laws on the other people, when you decide the fate of the other people, when you take away the, the freedom of choices from them, that's where you colonize. That's how you colonize. When you take away their lands, when you take away their language, their culture, their gods, when you take away their rituals, when you take away their souls, and they themselves feel that you know we are the that is the colonization. That is colonization, and the colonization happened on on this peninsula way before these foreign ships landed on the peninsula. It happened with the upper caste, you know, making this Varna you know, which a lot of people still justify that you know this is a good way of you know classification of of uh, of a society. But who says it is good? It is only the people who get something out of it. You know, they say that you know, okay, yeah, you know, Varna Ashram is right, but the caste system is wrong. What kind of uh, human being would want to be a part of, of somebody's leg? What, what sort of uh, human being would be a part of not even this fully defined? You know, untouchables are the fifth word now. They are not even the part of a holy Brahma or Vishnu or whatever. You know, so the colonization and everything that happened way before. And I derive my, uh, my inspiration from the West. Not from the white West, but from the black West. I learn from the from the black people. I learn from the I learn from Malcolm X. I learn from Nina Simone. I learn from Angela Davis, and that's my sort of people. So I am not here to you know decolonize or you know uh, refresh the the doings of like past 200 years or 300 years. I have some to my here who talk about you know the English language has come. You know, while you all say that you know English is not good, had English not been at my home, I would not have been sitting here. But you, some of you might enjoy everything as we can other thing. My mother made sure that I speak proper English because she knew that you know when I'll be going to these interviews, they'll be they'll be you know looking at me with the kind of language that I speak. Maybe for you it is a language of pride for me, no. For me, I had no other choice but to have a proper Hindi and a proper English as my language. So that the interview cannot you know, discredit me because you have all your life, so 
So for me, decolonization of languages of culture is not just this 200 or 300 year old, old you know, thing. It is something which is way beyond, which is, you know, which has kept the community way, way far away from, uh, from the mainstream. And now, we are the community which built your temples, your mosques, your churches and everything. And you said that, you know, we are not artists. What is the representation of, of the Dalits in, in this art fair? Who created all these, all these, uh, you know, your, your uh, popular sculptures and everything? It was our people. You know, those people, you know, who, who do these rituals and other things, they made us do things. And we are, as I said before, you know, we are those beautiful people who can make art out of pretty dead cows and dead skins of dead animals. We are those people who can give life to these dry leaves. We are those people, you know, have you even read, when you talk about feminism, have you ever read Dalit feminism or any Dalit feminist? Have you ever read Pavartha? Have you ever read Vasudeva Vasudhari? You will weep. You will weep the way it criticizes the men of the community itself. If you want to learn feminism, learn from us. And I pity you. It's not that I feel humiliated when you call me Dalit or, you know, when you... It's I pity you. That you know in 2023 you are still living in a medieval century and I pity you that you know and I, I really have a hope that someday, maybe someday you know, maybe before you will die, for, for some time you will have this courage to learn that the society has made all of us human beings. We as black, white, Dalit or whatever men, women, queer, we are all equal and maybe you know for that 15 minutes or 10 minutes you will be able to live as a human being. Otherwise all are animals. Here, post the broken foot, uh, I, I co-curated the exhibition. 
मैं तो उम्मीद समझता हूँ पता ही नहीं क्या हो and why I I talk about the curatorial focus and curatorial curatorial discourse you know when I was there there's a group of sixty artists I'm creating for the uh, this show particular program the idea of you know democracy and idea of constitution idea of freedom has to be there in the center of any curatorial focus so so that that's how I work with the idea of you know just this image uh, is from performance that I did for the sixth year. The multiple performance that I did are under this series that human is human. As Sudesh recently discussed the idea of cow politics and skinny, you know, how the answers have been created from the government to cow skin. In Gujarat, Una, uh, the political confusion of the murder ranged because they were carrying the big cow. So how still we are carrying the colonial mindset, you know, living in society. And you can go to YouTube and see the video of how they have been built and enriched. That the group of people, that they have been got written now in front of, front of the administration. It indicates the, the, the power, the symbol of state. And so many people were capturing the video of that incident. So how do we you know, uh, live and exist in society if anything like this episode of atrocity happening in front of us? Like your silence can be a violence for Your silence is the most supportive thing to such kind of uh, attempts and attempts. Mostly working as a digital artist, even though I've been told many times that you know you should go to the contemporary materials and others. I've studied fashion for seven years, and I've been working with fabric for a very long time. And I realized that you know there is an immediate need of creating more and more digital imagery. And digital medium was the fastest move. So I maybe you know I come from an Ambedkarite thought process and an Ambedkarite family. I believe in product. I'm sorry that you know a lot of people today you know believe that you know productivity is you know something it's a very upper class I mean, this sort of thing. We do not have that uh, privilege of thinking that you know productivity is nothing. You know if, if I stop producing today and you know if I do not produce for a month, I'll not have money to feed myself. So you know I have to keep producing. I do not have this social security or the social capital where some uncle of mine has some land you know where I can always go and fall back to. You know I. My father does not own this big house where I can always go back and fall back to and you know, do something. Else. So I can eat productivity because without productivity I can. I learned from Baba Sahib that you know because uh, how Baba Sahib uh, used technology in his time. So I uh, tried to take uh, some inspiration from them. How uh, Mahatma Phule started to use uh, technology of their time. They used press or printing technology and from their time and started making journals and they figured out they, or they navigated their way you know to, uh, towards the world. Their words which were only written in a certain languages were starting to be read in, you know in different states, in different languages by different people. So I realized that you know these people have taught me how to be modern, not how to be you know somebody who is primitive. So I should you know accept this modernity and I should you know use this modernity. And I wanted to create this fast art so I started, you know, using, you know, that digital art as something, you know, to create much more faster. And I realized that, you know, the time I was taking in producing things, you know, with hands, which would take time, materials and other things. I realized that, you know, I'm able to produce much more faster. And I'm able, by, because I'm producing more, I'm able to produce more stories. I'm able to tell more stories. You know, I, I'm awake every day. So, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm producing some work which is, you know, uh, uh, you know, if it's taking me six months or, you know, five months or something like that. I do not believe in that because I do not have, I want to create more and more and more and more because 
so many stories were taken away from us because there is more and more and more and more work to do. That is a requirement that I am just telling. It is not something that I am doing, you know, which is something above me or I you am know, trying to become something else or you know, something bigger. No, there is the need of creating these mainstreams. There is a need of creating such mainstreams. And that's what I am doing. This is just me fulfilling the need. And all of the digital artists, now we have a pool of digital artists. Five years back when you were all you all were writing articles on Dalits, you know, you were making art on us. You were you were looking at the case and you know you were making you were taking photographs of us. In these five years we have made sure that you know if a, an art will be made on Dalit people, it will be made by us, not by you. If an article is written for around Dalit people, it will be done by us, not by you. So it is something that you know we want to take forward and I think uh, we all are working very hard. Um, um, okay, so, a bit of my works, because earlier it was about Selma, and the work that we've done in terms of intervening, mentioned. Oh, wait, can we go back? <laughs> Sorry. I just take two minutes, there are not many, I just don't worry. Um, so, this is a work I did when, just to take forward from Huggers, um, you know, the lynching, mob lynching thing. So, this is also a work from there when Muhammad Akhtar was murdered. And then there was a series of lynching of Dalits. Muslims at the place. And then I thought, hey, you know, there's no morality. This society has become so vulgar. It was the lowest point where I think, you know, we, we died as a society. So this work came, it's an edging text like this. This is um, on Noam Chomsky's quote, which is uh, from his series on power and democracy. He gave a series of, uh, lecture. Um, uh, this is called, if it cannot be justified, it should be dismantled. It's talking about institutions where we have to revisit them, we have to, you know, rework them, we have to pull them apart, dismantle them, and then fix it again so that it's more inclusive, it's wider. And this also when democracy is under attack, but then we have an opportunity to question what kind of democracy, democracy for whom. So these questions I, I'd like to raise through this very simple work, where the core remains the same, which essentially means that some things have to define this idea of an institution, which is equality, egalitarian, fraternity, everything taken into account, human, humanity basically, and then how we work around it. Next, please. This is um, when Babri Masjid was 25, the demolition was 25 years old. This is a quote which says, uh, The past was erased, the eraser was forgotten, the lie became truth. So it's basically these bricks that came from all over the country with Ram written on it, which people donated. So there was a smaller model of the Ram Mandir where the demolition had happened. So this, I tried to capture it with the reverse written in Babri Masjid because it's, it's forgotten even. There's no indication also road signs, etc, etc. Next please. This is a Kaka Ordo. Again, Bhavri. Uh, this is the judgment also, which came in 2019. It also, we have to give Kaka to the right wing. So, Kaka is in the saffron color. Next please. These are, these are very recent paintings that I've done. These are on the farmers, test, which follow this work. This is degree border. This is also degree border. This is the Republic Day when they got into the city with their JCBs and reaping the streets. So that spirit was so important and you know one, one visited it, one was part of the euphoria but the moment was so real that the streets were ours again. This is Singhu Border. This is MKSS Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangmitan. Um, it it, played a huge role in the RTI and then Narega and this is a tour that we took um, in the, the pilot area for Narega. So where women had formed union, they were distributing pamphlets, there was terms of conversation. So this is a puppet that they had used to garner attention and villages upon villages came out and then interacted with the, with the text, with the people, knowing their democratic rights, how they should come out and vote. Next, this is Shaheen Bagh and this is the last painting I promised. 
This is Shaheen Bagh with Shaheen Bagh. So. Thank you. 